What up, boys and girls? Girls and boys, hello. So we got the Titan live going down tomorrow. Let's get everybody on here. Today is Monday, if I'm correct, because it was leg day and we went crazy. Um, we uh, are still 30-day blitz, crushing it. I will give you the link to 30-day blitz if you guys are not doing it, because we are getting ripped to the bone. Um, let's see what else we got going. We have the Titan live tomorrow, and I'm going to bring on uh, a couple guests tomorrow. Uh, so that will be very cool. Um, I think we were supposed to... Hey, Jeffrey, did you ever get uh, the emails? From? The couple. <sighs> we'll make sure we got that. But um, a couple started the Titan meal plan, um, husband and wife, which is great because it kind of goes and shows uh, how they were doing it, but how they were doing it differently. Um, the wife wanted to cut down, the husband wanted to put on muscle. So we will bring those guys on tomorrow. And we will go over... Um, how the computer did the computer, how they did the check-in and everything like that. I'll ask Mo as well to see if she got, make sure you got those emails. Um, and, uh, you guys, I think will learn something as we go through their nutrition and what I want them to do, uh, as they're doing this. So that's one of the big things. Um, we did a crazy good workout today. Now, here's a couple of great things I think for all of you. Um, the workout today was about shin position. Um, and where the shins should be uh, relative to doing hamstring work, relative to doing quad work, uh, and the different angles we do those things with. Uh, and then we uh, isolated some squats and some belt squats to show you guys how you could do both, one work in the hamstrings and the other work in the quads. That way you can do it. What's up, David? David, hey, uh, we got back to you today. David is one of my one-on-ones, and we got back to you. We gave you some insight on some stuff that we want you to do. And we're getting close to re-pushing you, David, like to 100% and kicking your ass on the next level because um, you've been doing so great on uh, the process of making sure your metabolism's up and we're building that muscle. So that's a great part. And what else we got here? Jesse? Uh, do you have, um, what supplements do you use? Really want to, one please. Great, yeah, I do supplements. Um, we talked about that check out the YouTube. You can go over that um, or you can just check out my vitamin line Titan uh, series over at BPI. <clears throat> Did you have another question, Jeffrey? It's Jesse, right? Franco Jesse. Husband and wife? Yeah. I do not know. Mona would know for sure. And just double check to see if we, if that is them and they were doing that and they're willing to do that because that was one of the things. Okay, good, David. You got your information. You're doing it. Oh, whoa. You guys want to see Jackness? No. Ooh. Uh-uh. They, mm -mm. they don't want to see Jackness. No. I'll bring Mona over here and show you guys what's going on. Let's see if we got some good questions today as we're doing it. Watch this one. Ready? Here's the question. My coach is Ruby. What do you think of him? I don't know. I love him. Love Ruby. I don't know who Ruby is. <laughs> just, just, no one knows. Ruby's so famous, he's a first name. I love Prince, The Rock, yep. uh, Cher, Madonna, uh, Madonna Stanton. Um, Ruby? No. Ruby. Don't know. <laughs> Arnold. Sorry, I don't think Ruby's uh, first name basis yet. Sorry about that. But that was cute. Um, let's keep going here. <clears throat> Egypt. I will be over in Egypt in uh, January, February. Just want to say hello to my Egyptian friends. Hello, hello. Oh, I love that. Type of training for 18-year-olds. Yeah, we just did a YouTube video talking about that. And so please... For all you youngsters, the great thing about that is that I started at nine years old, pre-puberty, um, was competing by 13, uh, still pre-puberty. Um, and so th there's, a, there's training methods I would use now differently than what I did. And so I talked about that. Then there was also uh, principles I did when I was 15, 16, um, in those teen years that I recommend for you guys to do. And we really went over to depth on that on uh, the YouTube video. So check that out. All you youngsters, check that out. 
here's the big thing for you youngsters. Don't waste the time. I know this is going to be a tough thing for you to mentally grasp because you're young. Don't waste the time because it goes fast. And right now at that young age is where you're going to put on most of your size that you're going to have as an adult. So don't waste it. Um, don't play around with the nutrition, like just not eating. And you think training is going to get you there. It won't. Trust me, the whole football team's training. And if you go look at the whole football team, they all don't look good. There's only a few that look good. Why is that? So trust me when I say this for you youngsters, take that time and advantage of you being young. Also for you parents, make note of that. I'm talking to you parents, start teaching your kids how to eat correctly. Um, that's the benefit that I had from my parents and that, that I'm gonna hand down. Um, again, for everybody out there, you're not trying to compete against me. You, you're competing against your own crew right now and or the titans that are growing up younger than you that are, uh, have parents like me that will make sure that those kids are eating correctly. Titan's a year and a, not even a year and a half and he's been eating correctly from the day he was born. So imagine you trying to go up against somebody like that when you're only giving 50% and I'm making sure he's giving 100%. That's crazy. That's crazy when you think of it. So, and he's got genetics. So push it, push hard, you youngsters. Take advantage of this time. I always kept in my mind, and Jeffrey's heard this too many times, he's annoyed by it, but I always, the cutoff was 24. That, to me, was my cutoff. I had to get as much muscle as I possibly can before 24, because then it just slows down. Um, and so I just want you guys to keep that mindset that uh, you gotta get it before 24. <laughs> Let's jump down here. Um, hello, Mr. Natural 2020. Okay. Hmm. I thought it was always natural. Just this year? Hmm. Right. I hope you have friends, buddy. Uh, this is a dumb one. Does it concern you about how much weight you are lifting as you get older? Wouldn't it be better after 50 to go not as heavy? Ooh, great one. Hold up as you once Look. did and start working towards mobility and lighter weights. What's his name? Josh. What's Josh's full name? Josh Horbolit. John Horbolit? Josh Horbolit? Oh my gosh. Everybody go over to Josh really quick. So, Josh. It's an honest question. It's not an honest question. Because <laughs> he made a statement on that thing. Josh, wow. So, Josh made a, made a statement. He first made a question and he said, shouldn't you go lighter um, as you're 50 instead of the heavy weights like you're doing? Now that's a great question. Just saying, hey, should you go lighter when you get older? Wouldn't it okay. Be yeah. Wouldn't it be better to go lighter when you get older? Now I'm going to answer that right after I give it the second part of this question. The second part of the question was like you used to go lighter for mobility. What are you talking about? I've always gone heavy and I've always worked mobility. That's how I got to do gladiators in my 20s, 30s, and 40s and, and, and still being active now in 50s. So the mobility thing has always been there. The heavy thing has always been there. So that's kind of, you lost me there, buddy. No, but he, he didn't say go light as you once did. I thought he said, that's Jeffrey, sorry. I don't want to, I didn't want to disquote you. What do you say? Wouldn't it be better after 50 to go or to go or not as heavy as we once did. I think he's saying... I don't know. I don't it's know. Bad grammar, but I think he means, isn't it better to not go as heavy? Okay, so he's not... He, his grammar was... Maybe it's European stuff, so his, I don't want to mess up with his grammar, and I don't want to offend him. But he said, he's saying, should you go, basically, go light when you get old. Yeah. So here's the thing that I've said nauseously over and over again. Your body adapts to the pressure it's put under. So your body gets stronger with heavier weight. So the heavier weight you put on your body, your body adapts to that. Now, are you guys with me? Lost me. Okay, now bone density gets stronger with heavier weight. Are you with me? Okay, now if you go the reverse, like 99% of the people do, like this guy's saying, go lighter. Here's what, uh, do we have to block somebody? Yeah. Keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. Block uh, Marty? Yeah, Mandy's already gone. Marty's gone. Bye. So, um, oh, sorry. So, 
we got bone density gets better with heavier weight. Also on top of that, your body, body adapts to it. Now that's just science, that's easy enough, so we know this. Now what doesn't help is your mind gets weak. As you get older, you're mentally weaker um, because you think everything's gonna hurt you and you start to ache more. Um, maybe arthritis kind of comes into it. Uh, the wear and tear in the ligaments and joints and cartilage are kind of feeling it. You still wanna go less reps, heavier weight. Now here's the reason why. Because you're talking about wear and tear. So the problem with all these guys that go light, first of all, you're not stimulating the muscle anymore that much. You're not working the inside connective tissue or bone density. Now you're just going light. So you're just basically doing cardiovascular with weights. So that's not helping you. That's just now more and more reps. So now what you're saying is, isn't it better? I'm going to break down what you're actually saying. Isn't it better to use 10 pounds and do over 100 reps? And that way you have more wear and tear on the cartilage and connective tissue and in the body instead of going with 100 pounds and do it for one where the one rep is gonna help your body and your nervous system get stronger and less wear and tear. So that's the easiest way to explain it to you guys. And here's the problem with that is I keep talking about that stuff, but for some reason, the majority of you guys keep going back and go lighter and lighter. Now, yes, you should, because you're probably one of those people, and they always say this, if you think you're gonna get hurt, you're gonna get hurt. So you're probably one of those people. And so then my recommendation is this, is you probably shouldn't even work out because you're gonna get hurt walking down the stairs one day, you're gonna blow a knee out or something like that, and then you're gonna blame it on something that you did at the gym when it was just your body was just getting weak. And that's what I don't want for the majority of you guys. But again, I'm only talking to the 1% here, the people that really wanna get better. Uh, let's see, we got uh, 52. Here's a good question. But again, like most questions, you guys leave it so ambiguous. Um, he, they're 52 years old. How many days a week should we train? All right. Well, I don't know how many days you were training before. And I would say that like everybody and what we just put up, please go watch this. The difference between this person's question here is this. He's been exercising. Okay. And what I mean by exercising, he's 52. He goes into the gym maybe three or four days a week. He doesn't know. He just kind of wants to go in there and be healthy, which is understandable. And I want you all to do this. But he's not on a plan. Now a plan is, he goes in this next month for three days. Then we go to four days, why? Because you wanna stress the body more to get it better. Then we go to five days. Oh, now we're really pushing it and we're tiring out the body, but we're getting the body fat down, we're getting the muscularity up, the bone density better, and then we back down to three days for another month after that. So we went into a plan to where we moderately worked the body, we got better, we got better, we got better, then we backed it back down. Now that's a plan. Now this person's just asking, hey, how many times a week? Here's the problem with my answer to, how many days a week should you go into the gym? Four days. Now all of you are gonna go, hey, Mike O'Hearn said to go into the gym for four days. Oh, that's just my recommendation for somebody that's not gonna really get on a plan. It has nothing to do with what I believe in. What I believe in is you get on a workout plan, a schedule for the next 12 weeks, We'll start out with three days, go to four days, go to five days, go to six days, and back back down to three days during a period of time with the right nutrition. That's what Michael Horn believes. But if you're gonna ask me how many days you should go in, go in for, 50, for four days a week. It's kind of like how fasted cardio caught on. Fasted cardio started with somebody getting ready for a show. Hey, you're not looking good. You know what? Uh, we have three weeks to the show. Let's pull out all the stops. Why don't you do fasted cardio? That will get you sliced for real quick. Okay, then the person got in shape for the show, looked good, did fasted cardio. He tells two friends, they tell two friends, and so on and so forth. The next thing you know, the whole world thinks that fasted cardio should be done all year long. And you should always do fasted cardio. So again, nobody should do fasted cardio unless you're getting ready for a show and you're still out of shape getting closer to the show. But again, you only hear what you want to hear, unfortunately. Um, I'm Nietzsche over here, spitting knowledge. That's right. Jeez Louise, I got to chill this out. But hopefully you guys understand that. And um, direct to the point tonight, getting there to that. Uh, uh, here's an interesting one. Josh asks, has Mike ever done yoga? Mike's been on the planet for 51 years. Mike has done uh, 
nine different styles of martial arts. Uh, Mike's done every diet in the book. Mike has done uh, every sport in the book. Uh, Michael's done yoga. Michael's done Pilates. Michael has done everything. Um, love yoga. Uh, and it's a great thing for mobility. And it's something maybe you guys... Uh, during a plan, we put into that if you don't have good range of motion. Hopefully, you are using weightlifting, in a sense, like yoga and stretching into great positions uh, so you don't have to do the extra work on the side. Love yoga, though, just to answer your question. Oh, great. Uh, someone here is saying uh, thank you about the good mornings. Again, we showed good mornings, but it is such a uh, tough, advanced exercise. So please use it correctly. It's pretty easy if you got a hyperextension, but I know a lot of gyms are closed right now, so you're using the bar. Again, um, a secondary muscle of the hyperextension is hamstring. But again, on the way up, it should be completely relaxed. On the way down, you're going to stretch your hamstring. And you may feel some soreness after. Um, but again... Uh, great exercise, and I'm glad you appreciate going over there and using the YouTube for what it is for. It is for free information to teach you guys. Uh, thank you, David, on the uh, good information. Uh, uh. Uh, here's an interesting one. Nobody's asked me this in a while. Um, and what is your goal in your body to reach your current body? So my goal, believe it or not, during this lockdown was to heal, uh, was to fix my metabolism uh, and to heal up any um, little aches and um, soreness that I had. So for me, which again, I hope none of you have to do this, but I had to stay lean and guest pose for seven years. Um, and this lockdown allowed me to not be on stage and uh, go off season. Here's something that a lot of the newbies don't know is an off season is when you bulk up, you put on muscle, you put a surplus of calories in, you feed the body, you get the metabolism working. Uh, you work out heavy and less, which is a great thing because it's less stress on the body in a sense. Um, you're not pounding it with the cardio and the hard diet, so you're not breaking down the body. And during that time, you should heal up any little aches and pains that you have. On top of that, you get your metabolism working. Again, you get your metabolism working off-season, not getting ready for a show or not getting cut. Um, I know that that may shock all of you because visually you may not look like your metabolism is working as well as when you're sliced, but it's actually working 10 times better. Um, so my goal was to put all that muscle, that memory muscle that I lost from dieting so long, um, put that back on and now slicing up to the best, best I've ever looked in my career. Thank you for the question. John, make sure that you test your bone density. Um, this is something I recommend for all of you because here's uh, something that I think people think. If you lift heavy, you build bone density. You can, yes, if you do it correctly. Um, but just walking out with heavy weights and doing nervous system doesn't technically get the bone density going. It's more time under tension with heavy weight uh, in power positions is going to get that bones really strong. Okay, and then you can test it, and that way you can see the process. I know everybody's like, I want to test my body fat. I want to test my body fat. And it's for me, it's like I, I test my bone density. I want to see how strong that is getting, how much thicker that's getting. That way I know how much time I have uh, that I can continue to go. And you guys will understand that when you get older and older and the aches and pains start coming out every day and stuff and you got to just keep pushing forward, man. It's, it's a battle and you got to love it. Nobody trains every day. Is meal blending healthy? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm guessing you're saying that they're blending up all their meals and just drinking them. 
Um, I mean, yeah, when you go to healthy, that means something different than what I believe healthy. Uh, you guys believe healthy as long as the blood and your heart's uh, working correctly and the blood levels are right. I believe healthy is if the blood levels are right and your heart is good and your bone density is getting better and you're building muscle as you get older and not losing muscle as you get older. Also, if you get mentally stronger and going, um, I can do less work in the gym, but smarter and get out of the gym, then that's healthy to me. Um, but blending it, the only thing you're bypassing there is the body speeding up to, to process and digest the food. You're just basically drinking it. So um, do it. You know, for, for anybody out there, my recommendation is do everybody's diet. I did. Um, work with different trainers. I did. Um, learn what they know, understand what it is, and then see what works best for you. I, I gave too much good knowledge tonight. I got to yeah. call. I, I'm done. Yeah, I'm yeah. done. That's it. I got to eat. Um, thanks, guys, for hanging in there. I think uh, this was a, a great one tonight. So much so I might have Jeffrey just rip this before everybody else does and tries to use it. Um, thanks for the questions, though. Tonight was uh, one of those rarities that there was a lot of good, good questions. Um, and I understand for those that maybe got their feelings hurt about uh, the response. Don't get them hurt. Drop the ego. You're learning. Um, that's the biggest thing. You're learning right now. So the concept of lightweight, I know that sounds good. I know that would be like, of course you go light. You go easier as you get older because you're brittle. Don't think that way, guys. Don't think that way or you're going to be brittle. All right. Peace out.